Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Virkod from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to discuss surgical anatomy of sacrospinous ligament and sacrotuberous ligaments in female pelvis. I will be discussing sacrospinous ligaments more in detail than sacrotuberous ligaments because the latter do not have any surgical significance in obstetrics and gynecology operations. As is my trademark style, first let me talk about the absolute essentials or non-negotiables, the very fundamental facts that you cannot afford to make mistakes in. Anatomically speaking, ligament is a condensed band, strap or rope of fibrous connective tissue that binds together to bony surfaces, particularly over the joints. Ligaments stabilize the joint or hold the ends of two bones together. This ensures that the bones in the joint don't twist too much or move too far apart and become dislocated. Do you know how many ligaments connect the joints of the pelvis? As beautifully illustrated in these two diagrams from Gray's Anatomy, the pelvic bones are closely held together by many ligaments. The various ligaments in the pelvis are anterior and posterior sacroiliac ligaments, anterior longitudinal ligament, supraspinal ligament at the back, iliolumbar ligament, inguinal ligaments, pectineal ligaments also known as Cooper's ligaments, sacrospinous ligaments and sacrotuberous ligaments. Surgically speaking, which one of these according to you is the most important pelvic ligament? If you know the answer, write it down in the comments box. Enough of basics. Coming to the main topic, the first thing I want to point out is that the name sacrospinous ligament is misleading. The correct terminology should be coccygeus sacrospinous ligament complex. This is because the ligament is a part of the coccygeus muscle whose fibers often fuse with. The sacrospinous ligament is sometimes referred to as the degenerate component of the coccygeus muscle. Before I discuss the sacrospinous ligament in great details, let me finish talking about the sacrotuberous ligament and then I will not talk about it later. The sacrotuberous ligament has broad fan-like origin from the sacrum, coccyx, ilium and sacroiliac joint capsule. Its fibers converge to coarse caudally to insert into the medial ischial tuberosity and additional fibers known as the falciform ligament extend to the ischial ramus. Many of its fibers blend with the sacrospinous ligament. Sacrotuberous ligament and sacrospinous ligament stabilize the sacrum and provides pelvic stability. The sacrospinous ligament, a fibrous aponeurosis, is a thin, triangular, 5 cm long, tough ligament. It lies within the body of the coccygeus muscle. It is attached by its apex to the ischial spine and medially by its broad base to the lateral margins of the sacrum and coccyx. The size and great tensile strength of the ligament allows it to serve as an excellent support for suspensory surgery for pelvic organ prolapse. As illustrated in this diagram, the sacrospinous ligament along with the sacrotuberous ligament transforms the greater and lesser sciatic notches into greater and lesser sciatic foramina. Function of sacrospinous ligament and that of sacrotuberous ligament is to stabilize the sacroiliac joint. The main function of these two accessory ligaments together is to prevent forward tilting of sacral promontory by anchoring the inferior end of the sacrum to the ischium. In order to prevent complications when doing this operation, it is of vital importance to know the anatomical structures surrounding the ligament. 
Anteriorly, it is closely attached to the coccygeus muscle. That is why many anatomists call this structure the coccygeus sacrospinous ligament complex as I have said earlier. Laterally, the pudendal neurovascular bundle is an important anatomical relation of the ligament. Superiorly lies the sciatic nerve and gluteal vessels. The vital structure that lies medial to it is the rectum and its blood vessels. Surgically, the important point to bear in mind is that there are important structures on the medial, lateral and superior borders of this ligament. The only border devoid of any important structure is the inferior border. This diagram shows to the last millimeter the safe zone of sacrospinous ligament where one can safely pass a ligature or two without injuring any important structures, particularly nerves. According to the study, the window is only 48.1 mm wide, that is less than 5 cm wide, and thus the distance between the two ligatures should not be more than 7 mm. One can imagine how small the safe zone is. Now I will discuss an important aspect of exposure of this ligament which is not emphasized in standard textbooks. In order to approach this ligament for performing operations like sacrospinous ligament fixation, where will you take the incision on the vagina? Contrary to what most gynecological surgeons would imagine, the incision should be on middle one third. Yes, I said middle one third and not lower one third of midline or posterior vaginal wall. After taking this vaginal incision at middle one third, dissect the loose areolar tissue laterally on either side. Then apply three retractors, one medially to retract rectum and inferior rectal artery and other laterally to protect pudendal neurovascular bundle and retract the vagina and third superiorly to protect sciatic nerve and gluteal vessels and to retract the bladder. For retracting rectum and its blood supply, I prefer to use Navratil Brisky Retractor, not shown here and not the standard Devers Retractor. For retraction, superiorly, I prefer Devers Retractor and for lateral retraction, one can use either Devers or simple C-shaped retractor. The assistant who is retracting the rectum and its vessels should be careful not to apply too much traction otherwise rectal injury can occur or there can be torrential bleeding which is often difficult to control. Use of circular lone star retractor to retract vaginal edges is also very useful. There are a few other tips and tricks such as use of endoscopic light source to visualize the shiny white ligament that we use while performing sacrospinous ligament fixation operation which I have discussed in my YouTube video on the operation. To know more about them and learn them, please watch the video. The link is given below. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics, and practical obstetrics and gynecology and other books for purchase inquiries contact me on this whatsapp number i have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students these are clinical cases in obstetrics thousand plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology thousand plus questions and answers you can also follow me on other social media platforms like facebook or meta blogspot and instagram the links are given here If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button 
share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you for watching